so this second video in the uh, Netlify serverless series, we're going to talk about how we can use GitHub and our normal workflow with NPM and GitHub to actually build sites and deploy them with a lot of automated work being done by Netlify for us. All right, so first off, I'm going to create a repository. I'm just going to call it uh, Netlify Gitify. Three, two, one. There we go. There's the name. There we go. We create the repo and we're going to take this link right there and we're going to bring that down. So we'll jump back into VS Code. Now my starter project, I've got plain HTML and CSS file, um, pretty basic files. These are the ones that I used in the first video. Uh, we're going to change this title to with GitHub. There we go. So this is our basic site. And we've got a little bit of bare bones CSS here, not much. And there's an empty folder that I've added here called dist. Now, what I'm going to be doing with this is this will be my distribution folder. So I'm going to actually create a build process. I'm going to have a script that runs and it's going to take the latest version of my HTML and my CSS and copy them into this dist folder. Okay, so let's do our git init, get that set up. There we go. We've turned this into a Git project now. I'm going to set my Git remote to that one that we just created. There we go. All right, so we've set up Git. This is now a Git project. I'm going to next add NPM into the mix here. So we'll say NPM, or we can even do uh, Git pull origin master to get this in line with the one online, we just basically are downloading the readme file. Now my npm stuff, we'll do npm init and we'll take all the defaults. There we go, we've got that set up. This gives me my package.json file. Um, it points to my GitHub repository here. And the only reason I'm opening this file is I want to edit my scripts in here. I don't need one called test. I'm going to create one. I'm going to call it build. The name build itself doesn't matter. But inside of here, what I want to do is every time I run this build command, I'm going to empty the contents of this folder and I'm going to copy my HTML, CSS. If there are other files, I could do those as well. But basic little command line script here. So I'm going to say I want to remove everything that is inside of dist. There we go. That's the first command. Then I'm going to make a directory inside of there called CSS. Then I'm going to copy my HTML and then copy the CSS. So we'll copy our index.html into dist slash index.html. Now I could write these commands shorter. I'm just trying to be very verbose here to make sure it's very clear what I'm doing. I am going to now copy my CSS main.css file into the dist folder, into the CSS folder with the same name. There we go. We save that. I now have a build command. So in the terminal, if I say npm run build, because that's the name right here, there we go. What I'm doing is I'm copying everything into this dist folder. So this is the latest version of my website is inside the dist folder. All right, next up, let's get this set up with Netlify. We've got Git set up. We've got NPM set up with our package.json. Let's set up Netlify. So we'll use our Netlify init, same as we did with a basic website that was just running from our computer. We're going to connect to an existing one. No, I've deleted. I have nothing on Netlify right now, so I'm going to create and configure a brand new site. So just arrow keys up and down and then enter to select. There we go. It's going to be, yes, my team. I've only got the one. A unique name. Well, let's call it the same thing we did for our repo. So Netlify, Gitify, 321. There we go. So this is the link to the URL, that's the website once it's deployed. And the admin URL, that's where we're going to manage it. So that is 
here we can yeah, I'll leave that up there inside of here if I refresh this there it is there's the Netlify Gitify 321 I can click on that you can see it's not been deployed but this is the site right here this URL this is the one that we're looking at here is the the admin URL now my build command this is the one that we just built right here. So we're telling Netlify, hey, you know what? Every time we're going to deploy, I want you to run this build command. So it's going to upload my files to Netlify, and then it's going to run my build script to do that work for me. So build command is going to be npm run build. There it is. Directory to deploy. So what is the directory we want? Well, that's that disk directory. There we go. We've done that. So git push, yeah, we're going to do that. We're going to upload all of this. But before we do that, I want to take a look up here. So site deploy in progress. So it says that there is something that's going on in the deploys. Here's the deploy log build ready to start so we don't have any content there just yet but what's going to happen is we have connected Netlify and GitHub now when you first come in to Netlify if this is the first time that you've set it up if you haven't already um, created a connection between your GitHub account and Netlify's account you'll have a big thing right here that lets you install the Netlify app on GitHub. So they have an app that runs on GitHub and you give it permission to run on your account. You're giving it permission to access either your public or your private repositories or you can do it one by one. However you decide to manage the permissions, you're going to be setting up on GitHub this little account that's going to run and it's going to now give Netlify permission to watch your repo and look for any time that there is an update so let's come back here and we're going to save all these changes that we just did. So all these files that we just created, we're going to take those and we're going to upload those to our GitHub account. But there's one more thing that I want to add in here. And that's just to be specific. We're going to create a netlify.toml file if you remember from the last video this was our settings file so inside of here there's going to be a build section and we're going to add publish equals dist now we could have created this before we did our init and it would have been able to read these settings but it's fine doing it afterwards as well I'm going to save that so that is the folder that we want to take as the published settings. Now I'm going to update GitHub. So right now, on here, it's saying failed because there was nothing for it to deploy. There was no dist folder, there's no build script. It can't do anything just yet. So it was trying, but couldn't do it. And that's because up here on GitHub, we don't have anything yet. But now that we've got all this stuff, Let's do it. Let's do a git add. We're going to add everything to our repo. We're going to do our commit. There we go. Everything is now part of our repo. And now I'm going to push it up to GitHub. Git push origin master. Okay. So now, up here, I have upload uploaded all of this if I come back here and I refresh this you can now see site deploy in progress building so if I click over here here's the log and you can see right here in the log that npm run build it did run the build script so it did all that work it took whatever we uploaded to github took those files from github ran the build command, and then it took that dist folder. Site is now live. It's done this building script.
Here's my link back on the deploys page. If we open that up in a new tab, there is the website. And this is actually the one that is inside of that dist folder. And just to demonstrate that that is actually what's going on here, I'm going to go into my CSS, not the one that's inside the dist folder, but I'm going to go to my regular CSS inside of here in the header. I'm just going to add some color. There we go. We've saved that. Okay. So all I've done is I've edited the CSS file at the root and I've pushed it up to GitHub. So on GitHub, my CSS folder, you can see that's 16 seconds ago. It's a lot sooner than everything else that was changed. We did not change the dist folder, but over here, now this one is building. So it saw that there was a change and it's running the build command. It took all the files and it's running the build command to create that brand new content inside the dist folder. Site is live. So let's come back here. We'll refresh it, take a look. Sure enough, there it is. We have updated our website. Here, inside the dist CSS, no changes are here. This is what's on my computer. It has not pushed changes to the GitHub repo. What it has done is it has taken the content outside of dist, so all these other files, and it's run my build script to generate the contents of dist, but it did that over here on Netlify. So Netlify took a copy of my repo. It ran the build script, generated a new version of the dist folder, and then that dist folder became this website. And that's it. That is how you now have Netlify tied together with your GitHub repo so that you can manage it with your regular workflow. I don't have to do anything else with Netlify now. I'm still able to do all the commands that I did in the last video. I can still do Netlify dev to run a local version of this. If I wanted to do that locally here, we could run on our own npm run build. That's going to copy everything into that dist folder. Then I could say netlify dev. That's going to be my local test version of this. There it is. Let's open it up. And there we go. This is, we ran the build script and we're looking at the dist folder right here. So I'm running a local version. If I wanted to do that live test version, we can do that as well. So we can kill this one and we can say netlify dev dash dash live. It will take the latest version from that dist folder. And right here, there it is. So live online, I can let somebody else see what it is. Now, I don't have to push anything to GitHub to do this. It's just, that's what I've done. All right, so I hope that uh, makes sense. I hope that gets you started with using GitHub and Netlify together, tying the two of them together. Next video, we're going to talk about the basics of serverless and how to start working with a few more of the settings and things like redirects. All right. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments. I'll answer as many as I have time for. And as always, thanks for watching.